Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, Ranking Member Rush, uh, Chairman Emeritus Waxman and Barton, thank you for the chance to testify today. My name is Phil Moeller. I'm one of five sitting commissioners, and I thank you for your attention to this issue because I think it's one of the more pressing issues in our country. The convergence of the electric industry and the natural gas industry is a result of several factors. It's kind of a good problem to have. It's, it just has to be managed as two very different industries converge uh, in a way that we, we want to make sure that we maintain the reliability of the natural gas supply and production and, of course, the electricity supply and production as well. Uh, I always have to point out the most efficient use of natural gas, of course, is direct usage, space heat and water heat. But the fact remains that we are in a major trend pattern right now where we are using more gas to make electricity. I ascribe five reasons for it. First, it is usually easier to site, build and finance a gas plant than other alternatives. Secondly, oftentimes electric transmission is a cheaper alternative for consumers, but it is so hard to build electric transmission in this country that oftentimes utilities build a generating plant instead. The third reason alluded to earlier, we have an abundance of renewable power that has been entering the grid, but it is intermittent in nature. It is not always there. You need something to back it up, to firm it up. That is almost always a gas plant because of the, its ability to respond quickly. Uh, the fourth reason, of course, also alluded to earlier, is a suite of environmental regulations, uh, air regulations by the EPA that is resulting in the shutdown and uh, the retrofitting of thousands of megawatts of coal plants in this country. And the fifth reason is that we appear to have a long-term period of moderate to low prices of natural gas. That is coming domestically uh, quite, quite amazingly only in the last five or six years because of the new technologies of horizontal drilling and hydrofracking that have allowed us to uh, access these resources that we, we didn't really even know we had five or six years ago. I was honored and privileged to sit on the uh, coordinating subcommittee of the National Petroleum Council. And they put out a two-year study about a year and a half ago called Prudent Development. I brought the summary along today. Uh, it's, it, it outlines just the enormous resources we have in North America on oil and gas, again, ones that we didn't even realize we had a few years ago. Now, we as a society may decide to restrict the use of some of these new technologies. That won't be our decision. But if we, uh, if we don't do that, or even if we do to some extent, technology will only allow us to find more of these resources, perhaps extract them, and absent a big change, we appear to have a long-term period of stability of gas in this country, and that leads to um, the fact that we will probably have low to moderate prices for a relatively long time. Well, even uh, despite this, we have had some challenges in our country where at times there essentially hasn't been enough gas to go around, usually in a cold weather event. My colleague, Commissioner Lafleur, experienced it firsthand in 2004 in New England. A few other examples include some rolling blackouts around Denver in 2006, um, uh, almost a near capacity catastrophe in my home of the Pacific Northwest in December of 2009, when some quick action averted a lot of outages. But the, atten uh, the event that really brought my attention to this issue was the Southwest outage of February 2011 where uh, over 3 million people in Texas and over 50,000 gas consumers in Texas, New Mexico and Arizona lost service. It was a cold weather event, but it wasn't unprecedented. And we had problems uh, essentially on the gas side to deliver electricity and then failure on the electricity side to deliver gas. Uh, again, uh, our staff at FERC and also the North American Electric Reliability Corporation put out a great report on that outage that describes the industries in, in quite good detail as a primer, what happened, recommendations for it. So uh, there was a failure to communicate, really, in that event. And um, it was concerned going into the last couple winters that because of those failures to communicate, we could have a repeat episode if we had some really cold weather. Now, in reality, we had pretty warm winters the last couple of years. But I'm concerned that the system hasn't been stressed under this new regime of moving toward more gas to make electricity in addition to the traditional uses of gas. So about a year ago, <clears throat> I put out a series of questions to the public asking where we should go on this. Uh, my colleague, Commissioner Lafleur, added some, and our chairman gave it a docket number. It's been a public proceeding. 
uh, our chairman has dedicated uh, enormous staff resources to trying to deal with this issue. And as you alluded to, Mr. Chairman, we have had a series of five technical conferences regionally based in August, another one last month, another one next month, another one in May where we are looking at the short-term communication issues so that if we have another cold winter uh, uh, event next winter that people can talk to each other, uh, medium-term issues of getting the markets aligned correctly and longer-term issues of making sure we have the right market rules, financial rules and environmental rules to get more infrastructure built in this country to deal with the long-term issue of enough pipe and supply to customers. Again, thank you for giving this issue the attention it is giving. Uh, that helps us along. I am not sure where we are going on this, but I would be happy to answer any questions when appropriate.